So it's the start of day three of the talks here. Jake, uh, what's the, what are the issues that are being discussed? Uh, what are the talking points? Well, the key issue today is going to be uh, the climate fund. Uh, the transitional committee is going to present the outlines of what it recommends the fund uh, will be. And there's a number of countries that don't like the exact contours, uh, including the U.S. and Saudi Arabia and, and some other countries. And so depending on how they feel uh, today, they may raise a ruckus on, on that, and uh, hopefully they won't. And uh, there were rumours in the Canadian press last night that Canada might uh, add to its bad boy image at these talks and, and join that group. Have we heard anything more there? I haven't heard that yet, but it wouldn't uh, surprise me. Uh, they're obviously you know, not a great player on climate change these days with tar sands expansion and, and the withdrawal or the signals that they're going to withdraw from the Kyoto Protocol. But I think the, the bigger concerns are, are from the U.S., uh, Saudi Arabia, and a number of the developing countries uh, might raise some objections. Okay. And what are the nature of these objections that they're raising? Why, why is there a problem with this Green Fund? Well, you know, everybody has their contours that they want, and uh, right now people don't like the exact specifications of it. Some is over uh, the relationship between this uh, fund uh, and the 194 countries, how much interaction it's going to have in terms of defining the rules, whether or not the, the fund is going to be an independent entity that can make some independent decisions or if it's going to have to sort of get approval for everything. Um, some are uh, around the, the, the role of the private sector and how the private sector is going to have to interact with uh, the host country in which it's going to operate. Those are obviously, you know, big political issues and there are some other technical uh, points that people are raising. And you're a veteran of these talks. What's your sense of the progress so far? Well, you know, we haven't seen the fireworks yet. Um, usually the beginnings of the meetings um, don't have the fireworks, so I think this is sort of par for the course. Uh, many of the big political issues are set for next week. Uh, the fate of the Kyoto Protocol and decisions about where we're ultimately headed, are we headed to a binding agreement or something uh, less than that, are clearly decisions that ministers have to make. So everybody's sort of jockeying right now, but um, we, you know, I don't expect the, the big fireworks to happen until, you know, middle of next week or or towards the end. Okay, and there seems to be a sense of kind of premature pessimism in a lot of the mainstream media with regards to the, the potential of some kind of agreement and, and specifically with regards to the Kyoto Protocol. What are your predictions for the end of this uh, two weeks? Oh, I try not to make predictions in these meetings because uh, I tend to be wrong. Uh, anything can change. I mean, the, the only way that we can get a, a, a positive outcome here that both moves forward the Kyoto Protocol and, and builds a bridge to a future legal system uh, is if the U.S. and China and India and all countries sort of move at the same time. I don't think that there's one single move that has to be made. Uh, as is always the case, we need multiple countries to sort of shift from their opening positions to something more reasonable, and, and that's what we ultimately need. So if that happens, we can come out with a you know, good outcome. If that doesn't happen, then I worry uh, we may uh, end up in a very bad place at the end of Durban. It sounds like it's all to play for. Reason to be hopeful? Uh, I think, you know, the, the differences on some of these issues are, are important, but they're smaller than I would have expected um, given where we started this year. Uh, you know, we don't have major fights over whether or not we're going to have provisions around transparency, whether or not we're going to have a fund. Um, in some sense, we're fighting over the details, which is a good place to be, um, and that's a place where countries can work out their, their differences. Um, there is some of these big political issues that are going to, you know, either determine whether or not we can succeed. succeed or not, and that's Kyoto Protocol and the, the, the mandate for a, a new future treaty. Jake, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much, Robin.